Well, hello. A uh, very special episode. We've been waiting for this for about a year. About a year to get to this point. Uh, the final episode of the Calexit documentary, the eight-part series by Warner Brothers Music and Awfully Nice Production Company came out today. The entire Calexit documentary is out and you can see it. Um, and just one thing you need to know, it's great storytelling. Wow, is it great storytelling. They got it 95% right. And the history and the background of the Calexit movement and who did what and why they did it and what it was like, nailed it. So this documentary, incredible storytelling, 95% accurate. They got the story straight as far as how we got started, what we were doing, what we weren't doing, what we were thinking, what we weren't thinking. Cannot say thank you enough for actually doing something no one else in the media would do. Tell the story accurately. So uh, really appreciate that. Uh, we'll cover the rest of the... Uh, episode eight and our points about that in just a second. But first, check this out. Well, you can uh, see the cover for this video is the cover of the latest episode of the documentary. Let me show you that real quick. We're going to be reviewing this episode, episode eight, Alcatraz, The Last Resort, full episode, released eight hours ago today, November 29, 2022, and we'll be covering excerpts from this. So let's get right into that. I want to play you a quote from that section. Give me one second. And we're going to base a lot of what we cover off of this. So here we go. In the months after Lewis posted his letter, he and Marcus became bitterly estranged, fighting over control of Yes California's social media handles and other issues. Lewis mocked the Calags movement that he had co-founded. He even started a new initiative, the Campaign for National Partition, CNP, possibly just to troll the other CNP, the California National Party. I still wanted to support the general mission of a national partition, a national divorce. And so I decided that Yes, California would become the state level chapter of a new national movement called the Campaign for National Partition, which also has the abbreviation CNP. It's, uh, well, I, I would like to not confirm or deny if that was intentional. By the middle of 2022, Marcus and Lewis were no longer on speaking terms. Well, Marcus doesn't answer my calls. And so uh, that's on him because he is going to be upset uh, like a little baby. I think that Marcus needs some time to get over his frustration or whatever. I think that he may come around when he realizes that he's not able to make progress. He's going to miss the days when Louis Marinelli could get him some press attention. The fight with Louis was embarrassing and a distraction. Marcus just wanted to move on. The movement is not dead. It's still here. We've been investigated multiple times. One guy is doing his best to burn the whole thing down and burn all the crops, but the entire rest of the movement doesn't follow him. And so we're going through a really nasty divorce, but 160,000 people still believe. But then... So that was the quote I wanted to play for you to make sure it came through. And, and here's a couple things. So we're very appreciative for... Uh, awfully nice and uh, Warner Brothers music to get this straight. They said at about minute 720 that uh, I and Lewis were fighting over control of the social media channels. That's absolutely true. So after Lewis said that he was giving up control of the Facebook and Twitter page and he wrote us an email saying it and he announced publicly he was stepping down, he then tricked us and hacked back into both of those sites, kicked us off and removed all of our posts then started saying horrible things against California. So we were fighting over social media because he gave up control of the channels, handed them over to us, and then lied, tricked everybody, and then hacked back in, and then came up with alternative messaging. Um, and that's why. 
And and that's part of the story is that I absolutely I'm gonna be real clear about this. Um Lewis is right. I I miss the media exposure. Uh, but I've never stood against California values in this role. And I can't work with somebody who's racist and homophobic, which Lewis has been since he took over again. I've explained many times he's been posting all sorts of things that align with California values, insulting uh, race issues, insulting homophob uh, uh, LGBTQ people. And that's against California values. I've never stood against California values. Never. Not since day one. When I wrote the book that actually started Cal Exit in 2012, this is the book, all of this now, it's 2022, we have a major documentary on the whole nasty drama, and it all started with this book that I wrote in 2012, first article about Cal Exit by Tom Elias in 2013, and I've never stood against California values, so Lewis is right, I do miss the media exposure, but the idea that I can now work with somebody who said racist and homophobic things in California that can never happen. It's a California-based movement. This is dumb. Secondly, something that Lewis gets wrong. Um, it's one thing to say that I miss Lewis's brilliant mind at media and being able to get us in the news. True. It's another thing to say that you tricked us and took away our Facebook and Twitter page and our other Twitter page and removed us from an audience of 70,000 people. So... It is not fair to say I miss being able to get media exposure and I can only get that through Lewis. And he took our social media channels away from us, which would help us get media exposure after giving us to us. So that's a total lie on Lewis's part. So there's two different things between helping to get media exposure and taking away the vehicles that we would have that I could use to get media exposure. So Lewis is actually removing tools that we could use to get media exposure while saying, hey, work with me again. That's not the same thing. That's trickery. I hope everybody sees that. The other thing I wanted to point out was that uh, I'm very pleased that they mentioned that we were cleared of the investigation at 839. So they found nothing. That's why I said only Lewis is being investigated because they can't investigate us because they found nothing. Let me show you again what I was talking about. Uh, here we go. FPPC document request to subpoena the bank accounts, Fair Political Practices Commission, subpoena the bank accounts. Here you go. Here you go. All that paperwork, looking at the bank accounts, checking us out. And after conducting our investigation and review of the matter, we are closing this case without taking any enforcement action because the allegations have been disproven. So totally cleared from that. Uh, we were also cleared... Um, yeah, state proved this. We are also cleared by these other investigations. Um, yeah, so there was no, the Mueller investigation, the House Select Intelligence Committee investigation, the Senate Select Intelligence Committee investigation. Uh, here we go. Mueller investigation, no collusion by any Americans. Report on investigation into 2016. Uh, co-opted unwitting Americans, but didn't coordinate with them. National Intelligence Memorandum. Uh, the committee found the IRA co-opted unwitting Americans. Uh, formal charges against yeah, indictment. Uh, and then here's the indictment, and they uh, didn't mention us at all. Uh, House Permanent Select Intelligence Committee. They looked into all the Russia stuff. They found nothing related to us. Um, so wanted to point that out. They mentioned that we were cleared of investigations. We were. I just showed that to you. Um, now, here's something I did want to get wrong. Uh, oh, I did want to make sure to correct. So also in the audio clip I played you, you can see where Lewis is just a troll. So in this episode of the documentary, they really trash Lewis. I mean, they make Lewis look like a schizophrenic liar, and they basically ask if the guy's just a lifelong troll and a habitual liar. Um, so it's all in the documentary. They constantly, I mean, they make him look like a sociopath, schizophrenic liar, uh, almost quasi-criminal. Um, that's what they did. So I also wanted to point out, this is classic Lewis. So in, I just played you an audio clip where he's laughing about screwing with the CMP's name. That's classic Lewis. This is proof of who he is. He likes trolling. 
He thought it was funny to screw with another group's name. He literally admitted it. So, and and you got to watch the documentary where they show Lewis saying one thing and then saying another thing that completely contradicts it. Then, however, uh, I did want to point out that it is a totally fair criticism of me to say why was I loyal to Lewis Marinelli for so long? Completely fair. And and like I've always told people, if you have fair criticisms, I'll answer them. That is a fair question to ask. That is a fair thing to dot, uh, get after me about. I don't agree that I was overly loyal, but I totally agree it's completely reasonable for everybody to debate this question, this point, this at me. I earned it. I have it coming. Absolutely. But I want to point something out. Um, this isn't, they kind of did the same thing with this question that they did with the others. So what they do is I sent my information into the documentary crew and I did interviews and they completely cut all of my information and all of my references and just go with the um, expert. Well, when you do that, yeah, I, I look crazy. But there's kind of a pattern here. So Stephen Marsh said that I had Social Security wrong. He was wrong. John Christensen said I was nuts, that water wouldn't be an issue in California. I never said that. I said water wasn't an issue if California seceded. Uh, foreign trolling uh, backed all of CalExit by Casey Michelle. Those are three specific factual arguments that I gave citations and answered questions to, and none of what I said was captured. So, you know, when you you cut everything we say out, yeah, easy to make us look crazy. Sure. Um, but I actually provided the correct information, and there was three times where it was just completely gutted, and you never heard anything like what I said. So the fourth one now goes with this, which is why did I stay loyal to Lewis Marinelli for so long? I gave them the reasons. They actually included absolutely none of it. So it is a fair criticism to say, why was I loyal to Lewis for so long? The impression, though, is that I'm nice and I'm naive. Um, what was not mentioned, and I went over all this many times and sent references. Um, and again, if you pull the facts out, yeah. Uh, makes me look crazy. So let's go over some of those key facts here. Number one, as I said, Calixit never would have achieved California-wide media if Lewis did not run for the assembly, and that's how Calixit got media in the first place. So when we were starting um, Sovereign California, then it became Yes California, the pers first person to run for office was Lewis, and Lewis Marinelli was telling everybody there, including Theo, run for office. Nobody wanted to do it. I was even scared for running for office. So Lewis was not the only person thinking of running for office. He was telling everybody to do it. Nobody did it. He was the only one willing, including me. If he hadn't run for office, we never would have got California-wide media. Period. End of story. That's what they were paying attention to. I'll show you the proof in a second. Now, the other thing is that why did we go to the Dialogue of Nations? Well, we went to the Dialogue of Nations in Russia because we knew that that was the way to get American news. I've covered this many shows. This was not mentioned at all. We had written to the New York Times and CBS, ABC, NBC television, uh, and 400 reporters. No one would even sneeze on us. We went to the Dialogue of Nations in Russia outside of America, and French, British, uh, Russian, Chinese, Filipino, Japanese, you name it, Brazilian news covered us. And within 24 hours of that, you had the New York Times and NBC talking about us. So if we had not gone to the Dialogue of Nations, we never would have gotten European coverage, which means we never would have gotten American media coverage. And uh, if we had never opened the fake embassy in Russia, um, we never would have been taken seriously in America or globally. Uh, the foreign embassy was my idea. I've always said that. I'm the foreign policy scholar, not Lewis. Uh, if you have questions, this is the book with lots of references and foreign policy uh, citations and also recommended by the California expert on California foreign policy. So um, there's lots of documentation. I'm the one with the foreign policy background. I was saying that because I knew it would be taken seriously if we could make it look like California would actually achieve international recognition. And so here's the point. If Californians hadn't heard of CalExit before because Lewis was running for office, and American news didn't cover CalExit before because we went to the Dialogue of Nations, and there was no shock to world leaders or reporters that this could be serious because we actually opened what looked like an embassy, we never would have had the growth 
of CalExit ever, period. Nobody wants to admit that. The fact is, is that the day after Donald Trump was elected, I was in the Capitol. Louis Marinelli was not there. Theo Slater was not there. Nobody else in the movement who's alive now was there except for me. Bart Gilbert was also there, and he's now dead. So I am the only and best person to say, what was the climate like the day after Trump got elected? I was talking to the reporters, and the reporters were from around America and California, and they had already heard about uh we had been covered in the New York Times and they had already heard about us across America and the California reporters had already heard about us. So when Trump was elected and we had massive growth and that's when you heard about CalEx exploding, that was because the media covered us well. Why did the media cover us well when Trump got elected? Because the media had already covered us before. It's a rule in media. If you're covered by the media, they want to cover you. If you're not covered by the media, they don't want to cover you. Same thing with banking. If you have money, they want to give you a loan. If you don't have money, nobody wants to give you a loan. Same thing with media. If media sees that you've been covered by other media outlets, you're safe to talk to. If they don't, they're not sure you're a risky commodity. Maybe you come on and say something whack job crazy. So if Lewis didn't run for assembly, we wouldn't have got California news. If Lewis didn't go to the Dialogue of Nations, which I agreed with, we wouldn't have got American news. Yes, that played out. And if we hadn't pushed for the embassy, we never would have been taken seriously. And it was the fact that we had California news and American news and that we were taken seriously by academics, scholars and government officials that created the cauldron that was the explosion for CalExit. Nobody wants to hear that. Everybody wants to hear the story of we could have just not had Lewis here and made it happen on our own. I'm telling you, I'm the guy that started the whole thing. And that's a total lie. I was there when Lewis was running for assembly. I was there when he asked other people to run and nobody was willing to. I was there when we went to the Dialogue of Nations and the other Calexa group said, we're not going to that. We don't want to be associated with it. And they didn't get covered in the national news. And I was there when I said, let's make this embassy because international recognition is the key part to actually pulling off secession. And the moment we did that, scholars were paying attention. So we had California News set up, we had American News set up, and we had recognition by scholars that we were doing something. All three of those things came together to give us the attention that California could actually secede. And if people in the media and around the world didn't actually think we could pull off the secession, they never would have covered us. So it is unfortunate, but it is true that if it was not for Lewis, under my direction, we never would have got the media that it needed for us to get big. Nobody wants to hear that. I explained this to the documentarians. All of this was completely cut and none of it was mentioned, but it's the fact. It's the truth. That's what happened. So let me show you some references. So here's column, Meet the Man Who Wants to Make California a Sovereign Entity by the Los Angeles Times. This is by Pat Morrison. Pat Morrison was featured in the documentary, and she's also the first public person to talk about California seceding. She wrote this article because Lewis was running for assembly. Lewis wasn't running for assembly, never would have got this article by Pulitzer Prize winning article, uh, Pat, author Pat Morrison. Secondly, Pat Morrison is friends with Robin Abkazer Abkarian. And if Pat Morrison didn't like the interview with uh, Lewis, she never would have recommended to Robin Abkarian to do another interview with Lewis, also because he's running for assembly. So, let's see here. Anyways, so there you go. Uh, LA Times, Abkarian, California Independence, California Independence. Um, Basically, that's that's the uh, point of that. Okay. How did that happen? Um, ah, here we go. Let me show you this. And there. Uh Political California Journal Political Searcher Agitates. So that's by Robin Akarian. There's me in the background. That's me right there with the shirt, with the sign. There's Lewis. Uh, so we never would have got this article by the LA Times, and we never would have got this article by the LA Times if he wasn't running for assembly. That's what got us California news. That's what started the coverage in California. 
Secondly, here's the time when we went to the uh, Dialogue of Nations and the New York Times covers us for the first time. You will not find an earlier reference of CalExit or there was any sort of California secession movement covered anywhere outside of California and certainly not a major American news except for this New York Times article. And they don't slam us. They just say, hey, there's no talk about how we're stooges of Russia. It says we're really here just for media. We weren't even paid money. We're here for the media exposure. Um, and that that's obvious. So there was no slam. It was just like, yeah, these people are self-serving and they're here for the media. So that's what got us in the New York Times. Now, um, we opened the embassy and then we got CBS News covering us. And this is what I want to point out to you. CBS News. Yes, California pro-secession movement now has international recognition, CBS News, links to this article. So that's the point. Let me show you again. Just because I don't want anybody saying that's not true. Now, these are uncomfortable facts. I get it, but this is the truth. Here's that thing, CBS News LA. Yes, California pro-secession movement now has international recognition, sort of. There you go. That's me, and I forwarded it uh, from Lewis to me, uh, 2016. So that was the point. I, I literally just proved it to you. If he wasn't running for assembly, we wouldn't have got CA News. If we didn't go to the Dialogue of Nations, we wouldn't have got National News. If we didn't open the embassy, we wouldn't have taken seriously. And it's because of all three that the movement exploded. So it'd be nice to say, wouldn't it be great if he wasn't around and we could rewrite history, but that's just not true. Uh, CNP was not big enough. CNP was not running for office. I wasn't even ready to run for office. Nobody else was willing to do it. Now I was the front runner on the ground and I backed all of these decisions, but they are the reason why we got the um, attention that we did. Okay, final point. Um, at the end of the documentary, they say, about 25 minutes, Shateska, uh, Shateska the, the moderator, says, you know, it looks like Cal, CalExit's plan is to solve problems by avoiding them, meaning that we think America's falling apart and the way to save ourselves is to leave America. That's absolutely true. Our, that is a 100% correct uh, summation of us. Our plan is to leave uh, as a way of solving problems. However, then the documentary suggests, well, you know, what is really needed is not a separation like CalExit. That's not the right answer. What we really need is to come together in America. And they talk about the Zapatistas and the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, also known as the Iroquois. And they say, you know, CalExit, we don't need that. What we need is to come together. And here's some great examples of people coming together. The Zapatistas in Mexico and the Iroquois Confederacy. Let me show you how those are ridiculous points. So none of this was mentioned in the documentary. It took me about two minutes to find it online, though. The Iroquois Confederacy was a peaceful confederation of multiple tribes. However, that confederacy easily split into two camps, first with the French-English War in the 1750s and then the Revolutionary War of English versus Americans in 1776. So in the Battle of Lake George, a group called the Catholic Mohawk, who were with the English, fought the French Mohawk. The Iroquois hoped that aiding the British would bring them favors after the war. A few French warriors joined the campaign. By contrast, Canadian Iroquois joined the French. The Tuscarora and the On Oneida sided with the colonists, the Americans, while the Mohawk, Seneca, Onondaga, and Cayuga remained loyal to England. So that is the Haudenosaunee Confederacy splitting up and not being able to remain together peacefully during the American uh, Civil War, basically, independence. And here's the Haudenosaunee splitting up during the French and Indian War. So why are they an example of peacefully coming together when they participated in two civil wars back to back? They didn't push back. They didn't say we we're going to stay together. They literally participated in two civil wars, French versus English and then Americans versus English. Not mentioned in the documentary. I don't see how that's a good example. I will point out, though, very familiar with the Haudenosaunee. I always refer to myself as Deganawida. I always refer to myself as Deganawida, and I told them that. And if you know about the Haudenosaunee, you'll know what that means. 
Originally, I thought someone was Hiawatha. Now I'm looking for a new Hiawatha. If you know them, you'll know what that means. Uh, now let's take a look at the Zapatistas. Now the Zapatistas, uh, sorry. Okay, that's weird. On January 4th, 1994, an estimated 3,000 armed Zapatista insurgents seized six towns and cities in the Chiapas Highlands. Um, the Zapatistas also had a declaration which amounted to a declaration of war on the Mexican government, which they considered illegitimate. The EZLN stressed that it opted for armed struggle. So... Why should we be like the Zapatistas when they literally rolled in and started shooting federal officers and attacking them? That's what the South did, South Carolina against Fort Sumter, something that we've always said we're against because that's violent revolution and we're peaceful. Secondly, how is the Zapatista revolution something to follow when they their plan for uh, being treated right was not to come together with the Mexican government, but to declare war on them? So... Yeah, I, I get it. Cal Exit may be problematic, but the idea that the Iroquois Confederacy and the Zapatistas are better examples of bringing people together, horribly and wildly inaccurate. Took me two minutes to find online. Finally, they talk about Peter Thiel. Peter Thiel did say that he backed Cal Exit. He said, quote, I'd be fine with that. I think it would be good for California and good for the rest of the country, America. It would help Mr. Trump's re-election campaign. Peter Thiel's a conservative who doesn't necessarily like California, although he's from here. Um, and he thinks, you know, we're out of whack with the rest of America. Let me show you where he said that. This is where the documentary got the information from. Uh, Peter Thiel. Here you go. Trump's tech pal, Peter Thiel, backs Cal Exit. Uh, Trump hated California. Um, uh, Steve O'Bannon said California was going to secede. And here he is, Peter Thiel, saying that. So that is it. We wanted to cover all the fine points in the documentary. We're very, very pleased with the documentary. It makes some strong statements, but some of them are accurate. Some of the criticism is totally fair. Some of it, though... Our information was completely cut and that was not accurate um, i will say we're very pleased with the documentary it did a good job um there's just four points four specific data points in here that we have a disagreement with that's why i say it's 95 percent accurate it got the story and the history and context right who did what who did not and how we felt wow did they get that right couple tiny specific factoids got wrong wanted to make sure they were cleared we've cleared all those up in previous episodes and we cleared up number four today so thank you very much and we'll see you soon <laughs>